States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we had scheduled today a topping out ceremony at 1.15, but it's been continued until August, uh, October 2nd because of the weather. We had a budget work session at 2 o'clock. That was a public meeting, so I'm sorry you all missed it. It was, it was invigorating. Um, and uh, before the start of tonight's meeting, we had an executive session. We, started, uh, we uh, discussed uh, two items, uh, one real estate and one in personnel, which are PBA contract. Um, Next item, uh, we have a pre presentation from the Public Water and Sewer, Joe Houghton, Joe Van Houghton, excuse me. Whenever you're ready, Joe. And for the viewing audience, can you introduce yourself, please, and why you're here? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure this is up. So my name is Joe Van Houten. I'm the uh, chairman of the Public Water Sewer Advisory Committee for Doylestown Township. And we're here today to just provide an update and a request to the Board of Supervisors based on about three years of uh, studies that we've done in some additional areas of the township that could possibly benefit from uh, public sewers in the future. <clears throat> Right now, just as a reminder, we have three uh, cycles altogether in Doylestown Township with regards to the septic management system. The area that we're here to talk about today is part of the cycle two. And cycle two is bordered by, at the very top, it's uh, Swamp Road at Route 313. It borders to the right on Edison Furlong. The very bottom is the 611 bypass, and to the far left is uh, Route 202. The area that we're here to talk about is Phase 2. Um, phase 2 is bordered, um, again, to the right is Edison Furlong. The very top is Pebble Hill Road, and then again to the uh, left is 202, with the bottom being uh, the 611 bypass area. What I wanted just to, uh, to point out is that the, uh, as we've done in prior times, the maps detail areas that we've identified as having some issues with regards to uh, performance of the septic systems. And what we've done is over a three year period, we've used a, uh, a vast amount of data that's been collected to the next page. So we've gone through the records from the Board of Health. We've used records from the septic management system, the pumper hauler reports, Conestoga Rover storm water sampling reports. We've also utilized um, from the USDA um, their soil data and real estate transaction records. We've utilized these from 2000, uh, the year 2000 to the year uh, 2016 in order to come up with the data that we're presenting today. What I wanted to show you in the beginning here is sort of just a, this is just an overview of some of the research that goes into this. So since 2014, um, my team and I, we've spent a vast amount of time pouring through records and updating um, spreadsheets along with a lot of these maps that you're gonna see in the presentation. I apologize, little things keep popping up here. In the area in phase two, what we've done is year by year um, from 2000 to 2016, and going through the data and analyzing it, what we were looking at was trying to determine if something was a repair versus a uh, replacement. Um, repairs were things that were minor, such as a distribution box being replaced, a um, This is really not cooperating here. Um, distribution box being replaced. We also um, took into account of a baffle or something minor had to be uh, be taken care of. I'm bringing my own computer next time. 
major, um, and obviously a replacement is someone actually had to go in, work with the Board of Health, and had to actually replace their entire uh, their septic system, whether it's putting a new drain field in um, or an entire new system. In some cases, it also involved having to put a holding tank in if there wasn't enough room on the property to put a new system in place. What we've done is we've taken the data and we uh, have graphed it out over the 16-year period with regards to um, the amount of replacements versus repairs in the uh, area that we've uh, reviewed. Uh, we also included data for another area which is adjacent to this, which is in phase three. This is an example of just the type of some of the data that we've gone through. So what we've done is we've gone and, and taking a look at all of the records by parcel. So we took a look at every single parcel that was in the area of phase two that was being studied, all the parcels in phase three over a 16 year period, and took a look at through all those records that I mentioned before in order to determine if what type of um, repairs or replacements were done on the properties. And we actually went through and noted every one of them. You'll see you know, where it says a new system was put in place. We've taken a look at what year the house was actually built, so that's when the septic system was originally put in place. There is some older data you'll see from the 80s and 90s, but the majority of the data we wanted to go through was to look from 2000 until 2016, so it was more up to date for, um, you know, for this purpose. <clears throat> At the efforts of uh, Barbara and Rick, um, we were able to have a meeting with Bucks County Water and Sewer. They came in on August the, uh, August the 1st to meet with us. And the purpose of the meeting was to try to find a way that we would be able to um, develop a long-term plan for Dawes Town Township with regards to on-lot septic management and moving forward with areas of the township that might benefit from public sewers in the future. And the reason why we did this was to try to avoid um, some of the issues of the past, where, you know, 20 years ago was identified an area of the township that might need sewers, and it took decades in order to get to the, to the point where you were finally able to get a, a project going. And what happens is it leaves a lot of ambiguity for the homeowner, because the homeowners really don't know what to do. They don't know how to move forward with regards to do I repair my system, do I hold off, what do I need to, uh, what do I need to do. So we met with uh, Bucks County Water and Sewer, the letters uh, available for in the public record. Um, they in turn, you know, shared with us their, uh, their plans for the area going forward in the sense of how much capacity do you have, the ability to uh, turn around a project. Um, they also are willing to, if we can, um, at the request of the supervisors, um, they're willing to, to have a member of their uh, Bucks County Water and Sewer come in as a liaison with our uh, board in order to help uh, with communications, to help things move forward at a, uh, at a more efficient rate going forward. Um, this is really the, the real detail that I'm sure you're looking for. So in the area that we're discussing, there's 476 tax IDs altogether in phase two. There were 61 records um, with regards to um, on file with the Board of Health, of which we had about um, in phase three, there's 97 uh, records were found um, for the Board of Health out of the 721 tax IDs that we uh, identified in the um, property listings. So what we've done is we just have gone through, um, like I said, there's a, the data is all there. We've gone through Board of Health records, the pumper hauler records. We've gone through all the sewer, um, the septic management uh, reports. We've taken a look at all of the storm water data over a 16 year period of time from Conestoga Rover, which has showed that there are hot spots with uh, human fecal coliform not just fecal coliform, but human fecal coliform in the uh, stormwater outlets in various parts of this area within, uh, within phase two. So what we're asking the Board of Supervisors to consider is to allow Bucks County Water and Sewer to do a uh, preliminary feasibility study 
for possibly looking at sewers in this area, which we've uh, determined and listed as phase two. Um, we also would like the, the Board of Supervisors to come along and um, allow Bucks County Water and Sewer to have appoint a liaison to our board um, in order to be able to you know, have a better flow of information. And then we're also recommending that the authority add um, um, uh, engage with Bucks County Water and Sewer to possibly update our 537 plan to the state as a result of what they find as they are uh, with a feasibility study. Because if they determine, um, as we ha believe, that this area could benefit from public sewer, then we need to update the 537 plan uh, to the state. Well, don't you think that Bucks County Water and Sewer is going to say that we'll benefit by sewers? I mean, the question is, isn't it, do we have, should we be moving in that direction for public health concerns? Well, we've determined from a public health concern is that there is a need in the area. Okay. Um, it's, yeah. okay. it's, it's not as, the numbers aren't as, um, I guess, as high as a percentage as we found in the Pebble Hill, Pebble Ridge area. But you know we have a, a the amount of homes in the 12 to 15 percent range okay. um, over the 16 year period that show that there's an issue in that particular area. And just so the board recalls, the 537 plan was updated in 2000 2001, so it's probably due for a big overhaul for the overall township as well. So it couldn't hurt to do that process, and that is something that Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority will work with municipalities on to update at no cost. Okay. I wish it, what's the pleasure of the board? Want to move in this direction? Yes. Get the feasibility study? Yes. 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 Yeah. You got it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Wait. You know what? Let me put that to a vote. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You got hey, it. Thank, thank you. you. Is that for both the feasibility yes. study and 537 update? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think one goes for the other. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, next item on the agenda is any visitor or public comments? All right, please take the podium or that the uh, mic over there, if it's closer to you, and identify yourself. Phil Lair, I'm from the Estates of Dwellstown. I thought we were, I thought on the agenda was going to be trash collection this evening, but obviously it wasn't. No, so, not on the agenda. The only question I want to bring to the board, maybe you're aware of it, maybe you're not, but in the Estates, now that the roads have been all repaved, there are now five trash collection companies in there, and they're collecting trash every day yeah, we and get Saturdays. This, yeah, we get this bill um, on occasion, and what we suggest to you, and I think it's um, Ryan's suggestion, and she says it all the time, so I'll save you the trouble, is that the neighbors should get together and decide on one so that there's only one coming in but we can't make that decision for you no I'm not saying for you to make the decision on one I'm saying why can't you and Jeff maybe you can give some insight on this why can't you why can't the township say trash can be collected by five companies but it can only be collected on Mondays and Thursdays or pick two days because they're private enterprises yeah, they're like going to do it the when they're going to do it for them no, I, well you can't mandate it well I don't want to argue about it. I know other townships do it. I know when we, uh, we have we have a house in Florida and they mandate it. So well, if we picked one trash hauler, no, you don't have, have to pick one trash collector. But I'm just bringing it to your attention. You spent a lot of money doing the roads in the estates. Right. Now you got five uh, trash collection companies doing it five days a week and sometimes on Saturdays, and you got trash and recyclable cans out every day of the week. It looks terrible. Yeah, is there any way that we can mandate the when the at five different trash haulers pick up you can you can require that they not start before a certain time and end by a certain time it may be worthwhile considering a saturday restriction but i think we should manage now look into that further we'll get back to you when we have the chance to look at that that's fine i mean i'm just bringing it to your attention it's up to you i mean you've spent a lot of money on the roads and you got these big trucks in there five six days a week right. so i just bring it to your attention no. thanks Bill. thank you other comments Please take this, the uh, microphone, sir. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Lyons. Uh, my name is Richard Anthes, A-N-T-H-E-S, and if you'll permit me to read from my script this way here, I won't get off point, and I'll keep it short. Uh, my name is Richard Anthes, and uh, my wife and I recently moved to Doylestown Township in May of this year. Uh, my wife and I chose the neighborhood of Eljan Drive for a multitude of reasons, and in spite of the challenges of moving after 30 years, um, we have 
have been happy with our decision. I would like to begin today by thanking the Township Supervisors for the opportunity to speak here and make them aware of all the different departments that I have dealt with since I uh, came here in May, namely the Police Department and the Code Enforcement Department. Uh, you should note your day-to-day -day operations are um, in helpful hands and the residents of the Township should see themselves as fortunate as I do. My presence today was recommended by a patrolman from this past Saturday's interaction after a verbal criticizing that I received from a neighbor on Eldran Drive. Since July, this individual has made numerous accusations and grievances about me and actions that he deems to be unneighborly. He has chosen to air them in a multitude of venues to and include his own private property by way of signs, missives on his art webpage, and even to using foul language loudly in our small cul-de-sac. He seems to have taken an issue with my presence in the street while walking my dog with the aid of a motorized wheelchair, along with the installation and use of surveillance cameras on my property and the installation of a citizen's band antenna affixed to my home. In every instance, as it has related to this neighbor, when warranted, I have contacted the police. The Wellstown Township Department arrives shortly after being called, are always ready, willing, and able to speak with me and take the time to do so. I've been made aware each time of the resolution to them speaking with the neighbor, which has included making him aware that my actions that he has taken issue with are not in fact illegal. However, he still continues to proclaim his frustration. In an effort to quell the situation as much as possible without completely altering my, altering my life to satisfy another, I have lessened the amount of walking in the street with my dog and have moved the majority of his daily exercise needs to my property only. I have not, however, removed the cameras from my home. I have met with many individuals code and the Code Enforcement Department and have reviewed with them at length the nature of my neighbor's issues with these items and have been assured that I am in no violation of any township codes. While I'm, I'm somewhat unsure of the actions this body will be able to assist me with in this situation, I presently find myself and my family and I feel beholden to fill the, the advice given to me by the officer on Sunday and present a bird's eye view of the present environment in one of your neighborhoods. If there's anything the Board of Township Supervisors believe would prove helpful to resolve this community dispute, I would be more than grateful for your thoughts and ideas. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Thank you for your time. Mr. Antis, welcome to Doyle's Town Township. I'm sorry that your neighborhood isn't as um, welcoming as you find the rest of the township, but I would be happy to sit down with you and your neighbor and try and mediate the dispute. If he's willing, but I can't make him do it if he doesn't want to. And I will reflect back that I don't think it will go well, even if we do. Um, You'd be there surprised. has not been any ability to, uh, after multiple times of telling him that there's not an issue that he can become uh, frustrated with, it continues. This is out now into our third month. Well, just make the suggestion, and I'll be available if, if the two of you uh, want to do that. It won't be from me. I cannot make that. I, we're at a point where I stay to my side of the street. Okay. I don't look to his side of the street. I try to avoid the individual at length, and well, it's, it's difficult. Maybe the next time one of our patrolmen are out there, they can make that suggestion. I'm familiar with the situation going on out there, and we have mediated it to the point where it hasn't risen to the level of criminal activity. However, it is getting close to that point, and if it continues, that we will file okay. charges. Just let me know if I can do anything okay. before Thank that, you. short of that. If Thank I you, may Mr. Antis. May I ask a question of uh, the Chief, if I may? Am I at a point where do I wait one more, or do I make my, my issue official? I will give you the advice I give every resident. If you have concerns, you call us immediately so we can address each and every situation and determine if there's an ongoing course of conduct that could be criminal, then we can act on it. If we're only advised of so many, and our, our hands get tired. You are not bothering us by calling us. And I, I've been assured that, and it, it is appreciated. I just, I'm at a point where the frustration level and the concern for my own well-being, I mean, even after Saturday, Sunday's issues, and when I went out, mm. he came and followed me. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, it's a little unnerving. As, we're, as each of my officers tell you, please call us when it occurs. We'll come out and address each situation independent of each other, and if the, the totality ex, uh, gets to the point where it's considered harassment due ongoing conduct, we'll take care of it. I don't know how else to 
to let you know. We, just I, keep calling. Anytime calls. you anything. Even Email, if it's small. Anything. You know, anything. Just call. I can do that. I'm just curious. I mean, that's half the reason for the cameras is to sit there and give you the, the proof that it's actually, it's taking okay. place. Okay. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, any other uh, visitors or public comment? Can you please take the stand, please? Yeah, the stand. Did you say stand? I just said stick to stand. I apologize. <laughs> My name is Dorothy Gledhill. I live at 26 Charter Oak Court in Doylestown Township. Can I interrupt you? You're on the agenda. We'll get to you. Oh, I am on the agenda? Yes, you're under oh, correspondence. Yes, That's no okay. problem. We're going to get to you. Okay. Any other public or comment? Uh, public or visitor's comment? Hearing none, I'm moving on with the uh, announcements, and there are plenty of them, so be patient. Our next meeting is Tuesday, October 2nd at 4 o'clock. We're going to have a budget work session on that day at 2 o'clock, and we're going to do our topping out ceremony, which is putting uh, the last stick or something at the at the top of the of the building at 115 Thompson performing arts series continues um, all um, all events start at 7 unless otherwise noted the big chill classic rock is 11 a.m. to 3 which is in conjunction with the project hero ride to recovery and that's on the um, September 22nd the movie Paddington 2 is on um, September 28th the bicentennial celebration big birthday party is finally happening with the big Romeo and fireworks on September 29th on that Saturday the park's going to close at, two, at 12 p.m. it will reopen again at 5 p.m. Um, vehicle access will be five dollars a car so that's a big celebration please come there's going to be lots of special surprises we will um, hang our new flag we'll get a new state flag it's going to be very cool so do come big Romeo and the best fireworks you're going to see anywhere in the northeast part of the state of the of the country Bicentennial celebration continues. Um, we're sell we have memorabilia for sale, the Mercer tiles and bricks, and uh, we're having our time capsule dedication um, on December 18th, but before that, we're collecting all the stuff for the time capsule, and the last contribution will be received on October 15th. Veterans Day celebration is November 11th. Tomorrow, here, we're going to have a picture taken of all the veterans that we could gather for the Veterans Day celebration. So if you're a veteran, 3 o'clock, come here. You're, we're going to take your picture with, uh, with the rest of the veterans that are going to be here. Um, the veteran celebration, we believe, is going to be now at the firehouse. Uh, we're, or, not sure. we're not we're sure, sure yet. yet. But to be determined, um, it'll be 1 to 3 p.m. The auxiliary, women's auxiliary for engine number one, will be doing the food. So it's going to be a lovely event. Um, last chance to buy amusement tickets. I guess I guess the weather's changing. <coughs> the last chance to buy music park tickets at, um, is Friday, September 21st at 3 p.m. Radio City Christmas Spectacular bus trip is November 19th. It's $130 per person. And the Leaf and Yard uh, Waste Recycling is the third Saturday of each month from 9 a.m. to 11. Drop-off site is the New Britain um, Road entrance to Central Park. So visit our website for more information. Phew. All right. Minutes approval for the regular meeting of, October, of August 21st, 2018. Has everyone had a chance to review those minutes? Yes. Any changes, corrections? I have uh, noted two changes. Okay. Um, the first is under um, my comments. Um, Section F, it said that the 100 maple trees donated by Bucks Beautiful are also available for sale. They were donated. They are donated, donated yes. available That's for right. sale. And the second um, change I noted was under the request amendment to code about bamboo. Uh, it had stated uh, clumping bamboo will cause no harm to the township. It was actually the opposite. Yep. That's it. Yes, those are two uh, corrections. Um, any other? Changes, delineations, hearing none. Is there a motion to approve the minutes with those two corrections? I'll move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> Next item on the agenda, um, a request for the waiver of zoning permit fees from um, young Alex Spear. We see the opportunity <coughs> to give this young man the up to um, do a project at Temple Judea for his Eagle Scout. I'll make the motion. Motion to waive $197.50 yes. um, zoning permit fee. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, 26, 26 Charter Oak, um, you don't have to get up yet. 
because we have your correspondence. Um, has everyone had a chance to review this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to review I this? I saw it, yes. Okay. Um, well, I'll, st I'll take a stab. Ms. Glenhill. Glenhill. Yes. Um, you, you come to us for relief um, in what respect? Okay. Now you can go up. Okay. <laughs> how, how can we help you with this? Okay, well, um, I had a contractor come out to put new decking on the top deck, which was pulpy built original. Yeah, in 1997. Yes, yes. And it had two pillars coming up. Right. And a T across the top. So when the contractor removed the original decking, he had me come out and he said that you can see where this deck has dropped like four inches. The one side, apparently there was a, um, a concrete on the one side, one pillar, but on the other pillar uh, there was no footing. Right. How we got this information, we know, we know what, your, what the issue is. Okay. Um, you say that Pulte built this wrong and at the time our code enforcement inspected it and they and did inspect it. say that it was okay. Right. So, and then your contractor fixed it and now what, what is it that you're looking for the township well, to do? Well, because the two pillars came up from, I have a picture. They come up from the yeah. bottom deck. Okay. You stay with the microphone. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so he had to remove the bottom deck and to, to go stand in the joist and uh, jack it up and dig down and put a new footer in. So I have a picture of the footer that he put in and I have a picture to show you the line where it was jacked up. You can see the line there, how much what it had to be jacked up. So the, because of the error, I think, that the township did 20 years ago, it cost me $12,126.21 to have this repaired. And I think the township owes me that money. Okay, I see your point, but that's probably not going to happen. I'll tell you why. Um, number one, it's... Um, it's too hard to establish that, it's impossible to establish that the township did anything wrong. Number two, there's no opportunity for us to review what was done because the repair has already been made. Three, it's t way too far in time so that if you have a complaint, it would be against Pulte, not against the township. And um, we're Number not in four, the position. The township has no liability whatsoever for issues associated with inspections. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Mason, that the contractor who built your deck is the same contractor that did your repairs. No, that was the lower deck. The upper deck was Pulte. Okay. There, she, has, deck. she has two decks. I have two right. decks. At first, well, at first, yeah, at first we didn't realize. Yeah, we didn't realize she had the two okay. decks. It was unclear. And I stand corrected. Yeah, but it, but it was inspected. We have that information from 1997. So, and, and we're not responsible for private property complaints. And that's what that is. So you'd have to go against Pulte, and if they weren't short, but it was your inspector that inspected it and okayed it. But we can't say that you can't prove, nor can we say, nor no, and so and is so far removed that he did anything wrong. Well, if it if the uh, side of the deck dropped four inches, he didn't do something right. Well, he didn't build it. He did build it. No, our inspector. Our inspector, our inspector did not build, build it. it. Oh, the inspector did not know. No. no, he did not build it. Pulte built it. Right. But he gave the okay to build it. <laughs> what could have been stone there or anything else that could have been an impediment to seeing? And besides, there's no yeah, legal I mean, responsibility the quarry, so it's for to circumstances know. related yeah. to this. So then you buy a home in the township and you think that you're doing that everything's up to code and it's not, so it's... Township's not a guarantor that everything is built prop properly. And we, we go and inspect, and I, there are rules and regulations and requirements for inspection, but um, there, we're not a guarantor. Um, and this is 
genuinely a private property issue with your your builder, not with the township. And if it, you know, honestly, if it were just a couple months ago, but we're talking 20 years, there's no way that even if we wanted to do something about this, even if we wanted to try and make you hold it, it's just too far removed in time for us even to begin to look at this. So then we're to sit there and think like all the footers on my house, they could not be there or not done properly, now my house is going to sink? <laughs> I don't, I don't. I don't know how I think you have to just question. take it up with your with the builder of the deck. Not the builder. Of the, the builder of the deck is Pulte. Right. He was so the I would take. Builder. I would. I would talk to them about that. I would. That's who you kind of have to take the issue with. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Reports from the solicitor. Uh, we will have some topics to discuss later, but not at the moment. Chief. Nothing to report. Engineer. Nothing at this time. Director of Op. You have my memo uh, requesting approval of the CS Davison proposal to provide the CS Datum asset management subscription in totaling $2,400 per year. As you recall, uh, this proposal was put before you back in April 10th of 2018. At that time, there were questions regarding the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. The con terms and conditions were revised. No, they weren't. There were revisions to the terms. Modifications to the service and prices still is an unintelligible paragraph, and it doesn't make any sense. Sorry. They were supposed to look by their corporate solicitors. I, all I, it's you know. not. And I didn't get I, a chance to look at the revision, so I might. I don't. I don't see any changes to it. And if they made any changes, they made it worse because I still don't understand it. Okay. Well, how did we get to this point where Dave thinks everything's okay, gets it on the agenda? I read it. I mean, I, I read it. I, just, well, I mean, can't, we shouldn't even have it on the agenda. Well, I don't get to see what's on the agenda before it's on the agenda until it's on the well, agenda. It was in the packet. It's in my in packet. The, I didn't get know, to see it before it gets on the agenda. Did you read it? I, already, I already looked at it once, Rick, account. and said it was no because good. Because I'm not, I mean, I'm not, that's not my, we my profession. I'm not a solicitor, and I don't, you know, again, um, of so you know, just I can't asking for the, the, for the service to be approved. That's all. I understand. Okay, moving on. Can we table this until they do it right? I'll look at it. I, like I said, I got the packet yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to look at it. So Friday. I will look at it. Does anybody else want to speak to this? I mean, it's paragraph. It's the modifications to the service prices. No, if you're not paragraph. happy with it and you don't understand it, then table it. and Make a motion we table to the next meeting. Thank you. Second. second. All in favor of the motion to table? Aye. 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 All right. Manager. Um, yes. Uh, we've received correspondence from uh, Pickering, Courts, and Summerson, who's been the township engineer, provided service to us for many years. Um, they have informed us that Mario Canales, our longtime engineer, will be retiring at the end of this year. Congratulations, and we're sad. <laughs> That's because we're sad. Yeah, we're sad. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mer Mr. Murphy. Yeah. All right, we don't um, need the a second motion, do we? part. No, but the second part is that Pickering Courts and Somerson has decided that they will no longer provide municipal engineering services uh, commencing in January. So we will need to find a new township engineering firm. Um, and I would just like to know how the board would like to proceed in um, that process. I think we should start the RFP process if yes. everybody's exactly. in yes. consensus. Yep. Absolutely. Let's do that. Do it. Okay. We will put and in I would RFPs. I would encourage not getting people. I mean, encourage companies in this <coughs> jurisdiction in this area, not from Local. like East Jesus. Can I just say that? Yeah. Just like yeah. something west of the Susquehanna. Yeah. No, no. Local <laughs> firms got well, it. Mm -hmm. No comment. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, um, supervisors. All right, I get to start because this is um, this is really this is really cool. Um, part of our bicentennial celebration is that Chris Elementary, the only elementary, the only school of the Central Park School District in Doylestown Township, did a happy birthday card to Doylestown Township for our bicentennial. It's called Happy Birthday Doylestown Township, and um, they interview people, and it was just an amazing piece of work. These are fifth and sixth grade 
graders. Um, they were able to get the video equipment from a learning, a innovative learning grant from CB Cares Educational Foundation. They put this this video together. It's a, it's wonderful. It's been on uh, YouTube. Um, this video was submitted to the county award and uh, received an award from Bucks County Association of Township Officials, and then was submitted to the state award, and they just they just won the state award. So, all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Kutz Elementary and their video "Happy Birthday, Jonestown Township" is um, is now renowned, and they won thousand bucks. So, so I wanted to tell everyone about that. That was great such a, a great thing. Great video. Mm -hmm. huh? access I know. I'm not done yet. <laughs> That's on yet. Okay. Do um, you have anything, Jen? Uh, not today. Thank you. Ken? Nope. Nope. Nothing today. Well, I, I have something. I think it's just as cool. Okay. <laughs> um, I, my three committees are of water, sewer, and planning. Uh, but I spent the last few weeks, a good bit of the time, with residents who are complaining about the significant uh, obscene increase in their quarterly trash rate by Republic Waste. And I think we've all heard from residents. <clears throat> yes, we did. One of the trash haulers in our area, Republic, deemed it necessary to increase our residents' rates from the previous $80 range to $138, $230, and $320 per quarter, and some other rates in between. They just, they don't have a, they just, I don't know how they pick their rates. Um, Republic offers no options. For example, to reduce pickups from twice a week to once a week, Basically, when I called, it was take it or leave it. I left it. It appears that the world demand for these raw materials has dropped significantly, and therefore China will no longer accept the recycled products. No trash hauler has increased their rates significantly other than Republic. One of the township's responsibilities is to protect and represent our residents. To that end, the township has had communication with Republic West, uh, Waste, Stephanie will talk maybe a little bit about that when I'm done. The township is, at times has looked at contracting with one trash hauler for the entire township, as came up a little earlier. The downsides of this option outweigh any of the benefits. The township posts the approved trash haulers list on our website. Call these companies for quotes. I personally am paying $69 per quarter for whitetail trash to pick up once a week. As I tell everyone who contacted me and contacts me, the township can only do so much. Make your voice heard. Contact the Bucks County Consumer Protection Agency, the township, the, the Better Business Bureau, whoever. The adage that the squeaky wheel gets the grease is true, whether we like it or not. Uh, if you're hesitant to take any action and want some advice, you can contact me personally uh, via email. And I'll Pass it to Stephanie if she has anything to add to that. Um, we have had several phone calls from residents regarding Republic. We also had some phone calls from residents who use advanced disposal. Um, I shared with the board, um, sent via email, the information that was uh, presented at the Shelfont Borough. They have contract trash hauling with advanced disposal, and they put out a very nice presentation to them on the reasons behind the cost increases and kind of what's going to come down the pike and some of the things you know looking ahead and what those options and solutions are and we've talked to whitetail um who also agreed that there's definitely a problem out there and although they've got some contracts in place elsewhere they're able to offer the lower rates at this point in time but even they indicated that at some point in time prices will go up and what is happening worldwide is going to continue to impact all of us at a local level and education, and I've talked to Republic, um, and I'm going to be talking to Advanced Disposal as well, and probably Waste Management, who also serves a large part of our community. Education's got to be the key. We have to kind of go back to the basics on the recycling, because the contamination of when people want to recycle the pizza box, they think, oh, they take corrugated cardboard, we can do the pizza box. Well, the pizza box is contaminated because it has the grease and residue from the pizza, so it's really not recyclable, for example. And so we're putting a link out on the website from information the county, sort of the A to Z, county planning commissions put together, and we will, um, working with our environmental advisory council, kind of go back to the basics. We've been doing it for recycling for a long time, but we've got to go back to the basics in terms of what 
material and how you really put it out for recyclable so that we know the items are clean and empty um, and ready to be recycled. It, it's difficult. I don't, want to, I don't want to trash talk, but even the, <laughs> the, the Bucks County Planning yeah. Commissions that they sent out, it, it's... I mean, I, I didn't realize I was in non-compliance. I, I didn't know you couldn't recycle pizza boxes. Um, mm -hmm. You can't put your your shredded paper in a plastic bag and put that in recycle. You have to right. empty it. So I'm, I'm guilty there. You can't put paper plates and paper cups in the recycle. Um, so, uh, and even scrap metal, you know, you sometimes break something off of a 12 inches piece of metal. You, so it's very, very difficult. And I think it's becoming much more challenging and I think Hopefully, mm -hmm. some action is taken somewhere, somehow. But, um, Rick, um, when you talk to Republic, Rick, if yeah. you didn't recycle, what would the rate be? Uh, no, they have to. They have to recycle. They have to give you one bin of, of each. Why? That's our ordinance. That's I think the state law. In fact. Okay. Yeah. So if it, mm -hmm. I'm just look projecting down the road. Say the situation got really bad. What would you need to change to not to recycle? Put everything to trash to steam. You know, I, I, I can remember not to tell, but we came here, we used to have the green box where we had the batteries. Yeah. And we, we spent a lot of, not a lot, we spent some township money just to keep batteries out of the landfills. Yeah. And then they come back and they say, well, no, it's cheaper to better, less than all, put them in the landfill. So we got out of that business. And, and, and I understand newspapers and cardboards is one thing. But once you start getting into all these other things, Ken, it, uh, it's mind-boggling. Like I said, I didn't realize I was in violation, and I, I'm not going to turn myself in, but I, I, it, was, it was just normal things. I think you should just pay the $320 a month. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, a quarter. I, quarter. I, I, a quarter. But I, quarter. it's unfortunate quarter. that I, I, yeah. I've run into residents and come up to me, and one showed me his bill for $320, and he was paying 89 yeah. And now well, he's got to pay yeah. 320 and. Yeah. And and I think I mean, they were more my, more in my age group, and I think that's part of it. They just keep paying. They just they're going to pay whatever the bill is, and I think that's that's sad. Yeah. So are we having the EAC do anything different? With well, this? this is on our website. Yeah, that is. Is that yeah. they're yeah. going to be involved in investigating right. what yeah. to do? Options. Options. I did Thanks. invite Republic to come, and I know Whitetail reached out to me. Um, they're willing. <laughs> Because there's so much competition between everybody, they don't necessarily want to come to the um, mm. okay. to the meeting. But um, if anyone here is here from one of the trash haulers, you know, certainly, you know, feel I don't free see to speak. Anybody jumping up and down. Yeah, no I, had, I got a yeah. call from the council for Republic, who told me that they didn't want to appear because they didn't want to be the one single out for giving the bad news. So the impression I got was they'd be happy to meet with a manager or, or even a supervisor to provide it wasn't a public forum unless all of them came. Mm. So. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else, Rick? No, that's enough trash. Ryan? Nothing for me. Okay, moving on. Any unfinished business? You hearing none. We're, you once again. Next item on the agenda is the Burke Track public hearing. Uh, the first aspect of the, your consideration of the Burke Track proposal is your consideration of the conditional use application. It relates to a property at 3725 Bristol Road, tax parcel 9-7-6. An application was submitted by Winchester Acquisitions LP for conditional use approval to develop that tax parcel using the B-15 option in the R1 zoning district so as to be permitted to construct eight single-family attached dwellings. Notice of the hearing appeared in the Intelligencer on August 31, 2018, and again on September 7, 2018. The plan, which is the subject of the application, was prepared by Gilmore Associates, Inc., was dated January 31 and was last revised May 30, 2018. The application, as I mentioned, seeks to utilize the B-15 use. The township's file, including any all applications, reports, and the like, are incorporated into the record. First of all, does anyone here desire party status? I see no one. Mr. Murphy, it's your application. Thank you, and good evening. Um, this process started uh, almost a year and a half ago. 
when we first uh, introduced the idea to the township in the summer of 2017. Um, as Jeff indicated, uh, there have been three filings uh, and actions taken so far. Uh, last November, uh, we submitted an application to your zoning hearing board seeking relief because in your ordinance you can't apply the B-15 use unless you had a minimum of 10 acres. And because of the taking for the parkway, the acreage of the property had been reduced from slightly more than the minimum to 8.9 acres. So we got relief last November <clears throat> to apply the B-15 to the site that's 8.9 acres. With that competence, earlier uh, this year, in late January, we submitted the formal conditional use application that Jeff made mention of. And um, as a result of that, we've had, we've followed your normal process to have the plans, uh, the subdivision plans, as well as the conditional use application process concurrently. We've met with your planning commission and got a favorable recommendation. This board, uh, previously had acknowledged the home on the site to qualify as historic to make the B-15 use possible. And most recently this summer, we had to seek a de minimis variance from your zoning hearing board. We went a second time because um, the calculation of density was not to exceed two acre or two units per acre. Had we not engineered it to do four decimal points, we would have been fine, but the calculation was 2.018. So we went back to the Zoning Hearing Board in the summer to get relief so that we could maintain that density. So I think we've cleared all the, uh, the initial hurdles. And as Jeff said, we're here tonight for two reasons. One, to have the board consider the conditional use on its merits, and then assuming we have that uh, approval in place, the next second part of it would be to approve this preliminary and final land development plans. Uh, Jeff was kind enough to share with me uh, his outline for the conditional use. Uh, we also would incorporate, as Jeff did, the review letters from your planner, which highlight all the principal criteria that we have to meet in order to qualify for that conditional use. I'm sure you're, you're well familiar with them. They include uh, the fact that we are preserving the historic home on the site. There is a, a two-story stone dwelling. There is a stone barn on the site. All of these, uh, the, the main homestead and the appurtenances are being uh, preserved, as you can see on the, uh, the plan that is on the easel. Um, we've already discussed and agreed that uh, this use and the way it's laid the property out is entirely consistent with um, the surrounding uses in the township. Uh, it meets all the natural resource standards for, that are applied to properties generally in the township. Um, it's compatible with uh, the existing surrounding neighborhood, and it takes full advantage and doesn't interfere with the parkway expansion that previously took place. The, the size and scope of it, we're talking about eight new homes, uh, in addition to the main dwelling uh, is in, compatible in terms of size uh, and character. Uh, the roadway network we've had analyzed and it's more than adequate to service this minimal uh, use. And I think the architectural plans with Ms. Mr. Canavan has, we should incorporate as well because that is also an issue that uh, is a criterion that we have to satisfy in the ordinance. And perhaps we can get Mr. Canavan to be sworn and he can talk briefly about the architecturals. Sorry to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Full name and address, Chris, if you would. Chris not, Ar not, not, you got to get to the microphone. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Christopher R. Canavan, Senior Vice President, WB Homes, 404 North Summitown Pike, North Wales, PA. Okay. Do you want the portable microphone on him? You do. Mm -hmm. Is it one? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just having uh, Mr. Murphy pass out the 
smaller versions of what's on the board here. Um, as part of the uh, conditional use process, we were tasked with also creating architectural compatibility with the historic structures. And what we attempted to do, if I can maybe do this, I'm going to stand over here and hold this one up. I have pictures on the easel right now of the existing home and the existing barn that is on the property. Uh, Pennsylvania Fieldstone, typical to this area, has a series of dormer roofs and uh, typical stone front on the unit. And we attempted to take some of the architectural styling from those units into the units we're designing. The units we're designing will be a combination of masonry and hardy plank uh, finishes, along with some board and batten, which mirrors the sidings on the barn. We do have uh, some shingle, a cedar shake shingle in the middle there to try to mirror the uh, roof uh, style to the building. And then we have stone that will be complementary to the stone that was, is within the structure. Obviously, while designing it to a more modern uh, structure for what we were attempting to do. These are all 32 uh, foot wide units that'll be about 70 feet deep. And if you can turn that around, Ron. Is that real stone? That is um, primary cultured stone on the units. Lick and stick? What kind of, what do you mean by that? I do not like the term lick and stick, but. That's what it is. It's, yeah, it's a manufactured stone would be on there with a hardy plank finish. Um, we will use, uh, go full rise for the uh, fireplace, even though it will be a gas fireplace. We are doing that for architectural elements to keep in keeping with the uh, building. And we have pulled the same architectural elements along the uh, side of the units too, so that from any given angle you have some uh, variety of look for the units. So we've attempted to make the architecture sort of blend in with what's on the uh, property. Yeah, we so the, the um Garage that is there now that will be that will be gone. The if I go back to the site plan, the only structures that will remain on the site there's the existing stone house which is right up against the road. Yeah. There is the existing barn and then there's a two bay garage that is serving the house. Everything else to the rear, which is the large that pole big, barn yeah. plus a series of outbuildings, all of those will be gone. Removed. Correct. So is there anything? that you're going to do for, I mean, I assume the, the the original home will be up for sale. Correct. Is there anything you're going to, I mean, it is literally on the road. I mean, is there anything you're going to do to, I don't know, it just makes me nervous. We've attempted to, to well, a couple of things I think that are a benefit for this house. Like, currently, this property takes access to the house with two driveways that right. are rather that dangerous circle, yeah. onto uh, Bristol. Those are being removed. So they'll and come they in will and be kind tied of... internally into the development, so they'll be able to come out and line up here. So really, their orientation, once they pull in, is oriented into the development, which okay. is nice. Um, the other thing is we worked with PennDOT. There's an existing, rather mature uh, row of trees along the property. It does, when you're inside the property, really separate you from the roadway. We've managed to make sure that the improvements we're doing on Bristol and in conjunction with our development will not remove any of that vegetation. And what we will end up doing is probably filling in the gaps where the road, the driveways are removed so that that does keep it separated okay. from that area. So it becomes that, that farmhouse becomes part of the internal neighborhood. Correct. Okay. And the views they'll have are more oriented towards the development. Um, and then we will... Structurally, before we sell the property, we're not intending to do any exterior renovations. The building's in fairly good shape that way. The only thing we will do is it is somewhat stuck in a late 70s, early 80s motif inside, and that will need to be modernized before we uh, look to put it on the market. I don't have any other questions for Mr. Canavan, and I don't have any other evidence beyond introducing as Jeff did and made part of the record, the review letters commenting and confirming that we have satisfied all the criteria for conditional use. One, one question. It's more of traffic flow in and out of the development. Yes. So can they, is there a left-hand turn allowed? We are. There's an existing um, left turn lane coming uh, westbound on Bristol for Coast Light here. We will be removing the existing striping in the roadway and creating a left, uh, designated left turn lane into our development also. Okay. There's enough okay. width out there, it's just a restriping exercise. And they are lined up center line to center line, so it's in conjunction with the, de the development cluster. If you're out there, this driveway is probably another 80 feet beyond. There's an existing driveway behind the barn here. That is another 80 feet west, so it's further away from the main intersection also. Mr. 
Mr. Tomko. Uh, just the, uh, do you show the, the internal pedestrian trail there? Can you describe or tell us um, who's, gonna make, who's responsible, how that's going to be maintained? The, there will be a homeowners association associated with this development, and the trail as shown on here, which is meeting your township specifications, except for a minor waiver <laughs> to narrow it through here with some trees, uh, will be owned and maintained by the homeowners association, but will be open to the public uh, via appropriate dedication language I'm sure Mr. Gordon will come up with. And we are making the connection out to the trail uh, along 202. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And we work, I mean, that was a rather extensive discussion with the Planning Commission to make sure it's far enough away from the mm -hmm. intersection to be safe. And there is an old spring house way. down in here that the trail will be brought around so that as to uh, they give some to the edge of their as they're property. walking along there. Chris, can you verify that you're taking it to the edge of your property? We are is taking that it all the way, yeah, the, the trees obscure it, but it's already all the way to the edge. So if this development develops ever, they would, right yeah. there for future connection. Right, and just so everybody is reminded, we talked about this at Bike and Hike this morning, um, Chalfont, New Britain, Township um, have a grant that will be bringing trail from Blue Jay up the road to Bristol Crossing coming up, so everything gets kind of connected at, at along Upper State and everything as well. So at some point we'll be able to tie all that in there at that intersection when something happens with that next property over. And obviously this worked out well because how close the buildings are here to mm -hmm. have that run internal and not interfere right. with the house. And the Planning Commission, Mr. Colello and I were all out at the site. Um, we walked it, um, and he's been also to the Bike and Hike Committee. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Any questions from the public? See none. If the board was inclined to approve the conditional use, be subject to the following conditions. Receipt of final subdivision approval from the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors, compliance with the two prior decisions of the Doylestown Township Zoning Hearing Board, compliance with the requirements of the Doylestown Township Zoning Ordinance and the conditional use criteria as set forth in Mr. Pally's Planning Code, preservation of the historic home, barn, and the two bay garage, and that the plan be developed in accordance with the architectural plans presented by the applicant. Mr. Murphy, those conditions satisfactory? They are. All right. The chair will entertain will entertain a motion to approve the I'll conditional use. I'll second. Any other questions or concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good to go on that one. Okay, the next one is the subdivision and land development aspects of the same project. And uh, there are it's going to take me a longer time. You, you know the history, so I don't need to repeat that. Right. Uh, if you were inclined to approve the preliminary final plan as recommended by your planning commission, it would be subject to the following conditions. Compliance with the conditions imposed as part of the conditional use approval, including the two decisions by the Doylestown Township Zoning Hearing Board. Compliance with the Pickering Courts and Summerson Review Letter dated June 12, 2018. Except for item eight on page four, related to the Bucks County Planning Mission's concern related to curbing. Instead, the applicant will install a four foot shoulder to be extended from Elizabeth Lane to the Westerly property line in lieu of adding curbing. Compliance with the Michael Baker National Report dated June 15, 2018. Compliance with the Pannoni Report dated June 19, 2018. Compliance with the Boucher and James Report dated June 18, 2018. Compliance with the SC Engineers letter dated June 14, 2018. Compliance with the correspondence received from Chief Logan dated June 6, 2018. The grant of various waivers that are noted in the Gilmore and Associates letter dated June 25, 2018. Related to preliminary final, existing features, collector roads, a whole variety of them. I don't want to go over them, they're all in your packet. Applicant shall be put to construct a 24 foot wide road with parking allowed on one side. But it'll be restricted in the cul-de-sac bulb with notes to be added to the plan accordingly. Applicant shall add a second drainage pipe to the trail between Spring House and Elizabeth Lane. Applicant shall evaluate the length of the proposed drainage pipe near 202 Parkway to ensure that the two-foot shoulder on the trail can be maintained, which shall be determined by the township engineer. Applicant shall continue the 10-foot wide trail, except around the historic tree will be reduced to eight feet. Applicant to pay a fee in lieu of recreation in accordance with the township's ordinance. Applicant shall make a contribution of $1,000 for each new dwelling unit to be paid as each building permit is issued. 
documents established in the HOA will be reviewed and approved by myself and the manager. Receipt of all permits and approvals of anybody having any agencies having jurisdiction, including the Conservation District, PennDOT, confirmation that adequate water and sewer shall be available to the site. And lastly, funding and execution of financial security agreements and development agreements. Mr. Murphy, do you agree to those conditions? I do. Can you breath? Yes. Make a motion to approve preliminary final land development for the Burke Farm. Second. Any questions or comments? Anybody out there? All good? Calling the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good to go? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, the steel AR proposal. Now, this is a contract that was comprehensive. I'm glad to hear that. Um, as you know, this is something the staff has been looking at. It would be $5,000 to have the analysis done for the township um, regarding the matter. And I would recommend that we move forward with that proposal. We've talked about this the last meeting, I believe. Does anybody have any questions with the contract or the attachment, which was oh, very comprehensive? Idea. Yep. Um, is there a motion to approve the contract? Move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, next item is Next the item is the your consideration of the development and agreement for the Anchor Medical Office building. Uh, the form is pretty much what you saw. They've got to add some exhibits, and they were going to deliver the letter of credit but it was coming from M&T Bank, who was, whose office was in Baltimore was hit with lightning, and they can't, could, couldn't get the letter of credit out today. Oh. So I would recommend that if you're inclined to approve it, that you hold the agreements until the letter of credit and all the other requirements I, are, in fact, in hand. I agree, mm -hmm. too. All right. So preliminary approvement is that approval a, that we're doing without the letter of credit? You're just going to approve it. But you're going to all, not have it released until all the exhibits and everything else is received. received. And we don't have the original. I think they're, they're she has the originals. originals. Yeah, yeah, she's got everything. She's just waiting on that one item. Okay. What do we need to know about this? It's just a development agreement for the office building that you approved previously as part of the hospital project. Also very comprehensive. Yes. Well done. Thank you. All right, is a motion to approve the um, Anchor Medical Office Make building? Make a motion to approve. Compre Second. Yeah, very comprehensive letter. I mean, development agreement. Pending receipt of a letter of credit. Well, not to be released until everything is received that's necessary. All right, and that's order. Yeah. We'll do it that way. And the chairman will execute upon receipt? And yes. That, yes. Okay, good. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. All right, so um, I think we're getting to the end. Mm -hmm. no? We're not. This is the uh, Bucks County Water. This is a hookup request, right? Yes. This is the how you know where um, Savetta's building uh, next to there's a little house there. The Lower State Road. On Lower State Road, he's the lo there's a little house right next to it um, that's never been hooked up to public sewer. So you have. Um, the Pine Run at Lakeview, and then you have the new Zveta project. Right in between, there's an older home mm -hmm. that sits there very close to the road. Mm -hmm. That's never been hooked up to public sewer. Um, Zveta has purchased it as part of, you know, just to kind of make sure he wants the whole area to look nice. So he's purchased it, renovated it, and they want to connect public sewer. Obviously, with everything out on Lower Two, State Road, four, there's plenty. Three, three Lower State. Yes. Okay. So Is there a motion, motion to approve the hookup? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, next item, Pebble Ridge, Wood Ridge area sensor. Oh, this is a this is a change in pricing, huh? And this is I actually, like this. and I, I have um, Jim Matacola who's here from, um, and I thought it would be good because these are the first um, changes in first pay order request. Um, this has to do with the clearing. If you remember Rutledge when they were approved, this is a change order, but it's a decrease in the original price, correct? So that's the change order that we had. It's actually a deduct rather than an increase that you typically sometimes see. So we need to um, have you approve that Ocean first. You'll, that. you'll remember that when this was discussed before, mm -hmm. that the concern was there was higher than expected, so the authority agreed to bear yes. some of the cost of the clearing and grubbing and resulting in the reduction in the cost on the Rutledge contract. All right. Is there a motion Would to approve the change order? Motion approved. Mo well, not approved. I'll make a motion. motion. A second. I have a question. Go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. so I thought part of it when I what I understood was that it was because they took out the stump removal. Correct. So correct. 
who's going to remove the stumps? The authority. The authority is going to remove the stumps. Okay. It's part of their contract. contract. Okay, yeah. part of their contract. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. They'll do that work. It'll be done at a lesser okay. rate. That's great. And then we have our first payment um, to Rutledge for the work that's been done. Um, and so you have that in your packet as well, and we need authorization uh, in order to pay make that very first payment. Correct. Right, we got a motion and a second on the change order. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm um, calling That's the right. question on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we want to make I'll a payment to. It's okay. A payment. Um, is it the eighty thousand twenty nine dollars and fourteen cents to Rutledge Excavation mm -hmm. for the. Um, and that's been cleared through whomever has to clear Gilmore it is the one who um, is overseeing this is for the pump so I'm getting a nod yeah. so that they're yeah. saying release the release it all right is there a mm -hmm. motion to release the the first payment to Rutledge in the amount of eighty thousand twenty nine dollars and fourteen cents whatever it was give something second I have, I have a question the first payment did we um, was part of the process for payment that these would be reviewed with the uh, sewer committee, no. or is it afterwards? After they'll get re they'll get statements and stuff as to what this is for the pump station, right? Or, or the clear this is for the clearing, yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm It's part of the bid. Okay, mm -hmm. then just refresh for me. Mm -hmm. What did we agree to that the sewer s committee would be reviewing? They on would invoices? they would get um, regular updates into what. Pro what's been processed and everything so they can the after, progress of the project. But, project. but that's yeah. after they're mm -hmm. approved. Yeah, they're not going to approve them. Yes, after they approve. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure I understood. Yeah, that's the board yeah, I think it responsibility. Was, in my memory, mm -hmm. um, it was going to be a three-person committee. I thought Colleen, Bob, if we mm -hmm. twist him, or uh, and uh, um, uh, Ken Wallace and Joe. Joe. You're, I'm sorry, you're Joe talking, Van they wanted, and they were no, going they to wanted, once a month wanted. sit down and look at the the bills. Is that that that? That's what I remembered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't. I don't think we've put that together. No. This is the first stuff that we've gotten in terms of. I mean, one's a change order. It's a reduction. No, no. Which, I'm just yeah, saying. Part of should, the, but this is the first bill that we've gotten. Colleen and Joe Van Houten and Ken Wallace. Mm -hmm. Can get together mm -hmm. once a month. I think we should get it started. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you handle yeah, I that? Heard anything yeah. About that. Um, you gonna do that? That was okay. something that we offered. I think that was something that we offered when you when yeah. we met with you yes. and the, some of the residents. Yeah. We offered to meet periodically and and kind of give a, a status. And I know <coughs> Joe Van Houten wanted to do it as well. So Stephanie will get a hold of you, Joe Van Houten, and uh, okay. uh, Ken Wallace, and mm -hmm. sit down once a month. Mm -hmm. I, I guess. Once a month or once every six weeks, whatever you think yeah. you need to do. Good. Okay. All right. It, um, yeah. Where Where are we? Mm -hmm. I think we it was need a motion. motion. Second. We just need a motion on the payment. Mm -hmm. It was a motion. I thought, and then Ken had a question. Did you have the no, question before the motion? I didn't make it. I was, was about to. I'll make the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Motion before the motion. All right. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All right. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. They get paid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to meet. Yeah, because it's now we've got to send it. You don't need to create it. It's informal. It's not like you're going to establish and a. I guess right. the other question is do you think that we we need um, Jim Medicola to come every time that we have these payment requests? No. No. Do you? No. 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 He might enjoy okay. these meetings. <laughs> I just love it. I'll just drive I just thought this there. was the <laughs> first time. Yeah. No. I, no, I, I think maybe. You know, if we have any questions, we'll let you know. But quarterly, yeah, I mean, maybe just popping in. If they're in the packet, if we have questions, we should ask them. We should ask them ahead of time so yeah. that they can make yeah. arrangements. Either he or yeah. Alex will come, they and typically no. You know, yeah. Okay, that takes care of that going forward, okay. right, Jim? <laughs> but okay. specifically, if any time you're going to reduce what we have to pay, that's always good. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Next item on the agenda is. Um, hmm. Proclamation from Lenape Valley Foundation. They're 60 years old, and we're going to give them this proclamation when they're celebrating <coughs> their 60th on October 18th. And I think it would be a nice thing to if they are a township entity, even though they serve all of this <coughs> county and beyond. Is there a motion to approve the proclamation? I'll move. To Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations to them. Um, Treasurer's report from September 19, 2017. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the bills list for September 19, 2017. Is there a motion to approve? 
Move to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Aye. All right, just real quick. The bicentennial celebration is September 29th here. Big party fireworks. Our next meeting on October 2nd at 1.15 for the topping, at 2 o'clock for the budget, yep. and 4 o'clock for the board. I'm going to dispense with the rest of the, the, the announcements. Yes. All right, we're adjourned. Thank and you very much. And we have documents to be signed.